Hello, I'm David Hunt, and I'm absolutely thrilled today and very honoured to have, listen to this, Victorian Commissioner for Gender, Gender and Sexuality, Ro Allen. Hello. Hello, thanks for having me. Oh, look, what a pleasure. And and what a lovely person you are. You know, like you, you are generally one of the nicest people in our community. Where did it come from? How did it all start? What was your family life like? Oh, well, mum and dad, uh, two kids in the suburbs out in Glen Waverley. Right. Uh, was always part of, you know, social justice things and always uh, making sure that, you know, we, we knew what was going on in our family, but what was going on around the street, you know, always play with the neighbours, always yeah. uh, looked out for everybody. And I suppose I think they gave me a lot of the values that I have and you know, it's, it's a good, good starting place. Yeah. Oh, that, that, that's good to hear. They still around? Uh, Dad's gone. Yeah. Uh, Mum's around. Uh, Eighty and fabulous. The, right. The body's giving way, but the brain is still there. <laughs> still there. Uh, she'll ring and give me advice all the time. Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. Stand up straight. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Saw you on telly. You need to stand up straight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's hysterical. <laughs> what was school life like? Oh, look, I didn't like school. Oh. No, I wasn't. A, wasn't. A, I had lots of friends. That was all fine. Um, but you know, I just it was actually the uniform. This, the school uniform, having to wear a dress, you know. Uh, I think my kid now, does, it just wears whatever they like and I think that would have been much better for me. I was just really glad to get out of there. Yeah. Did year 12, did, you know, year 12 physics, never used it again in my life, you know, and went on. And that's when life really started, I think. Okay, uh, did you go to uni? Uh, no, deferred with right. all the intention to, to do that and um, didn't. And went back, I just skipped the undergrad and went back and started my master's. Uh, in what? Well, social policy. Uh -huh. uh, then I got pregnant, so that went out the door as well. So okay. I did a, did a diploma along the way just because, you know, I uh, felt I needed to have something under my belt. Not probably the pathway I'd recommend for folks now, uh, but back then it was, uh, it was a certainly the experience is what opened the doors for me. And once I could get the door open, then I just sort of kicked it open. And the thing is, though, with those years, especially when you first leave uh, year 12, leaving uh, high school, is that it can be so confusing, can't it? Because you don't really know who you are. Yeah. You're discovering yourself so much, aren't you? Yeah, and look, I just had great opportunities. I just fell on my feet. I did started with volunteer work. Uh, I was a member of the Uniting Church and I represented them internationally for the World Council of Churches and the Christian Conference of Asia. So I got, you know, as an 18 year old straight out of school, got to, you know, fly to Sri Lanka and attend conferences and do work over there. And I went to Seoul and, you know, so I had that, you know, international experience, which of course I use now. I use everything yeah. in those years. And, and you know, have to rely on yourself when you do that, that sort of solo travel stuff and just enjoyed all of that. So loved it. Are you still Christian? Uh, I'm still a person of faith. I wouldn't say I'm, you know, religious, uh, but I think having that background is certainly, you know, helping me with the work that I'm doing. But I'm certainly a spiritual person more than religious, I think. Yeah. When did that all happen? When did you, you move away? You know, like because obviously you were working within the the yeah. church. One of the things about me is I'm a survivor of uh, conversion practice, so you know that's enough to throw you off the church in a huge way. Whoa. Yeah. So that was in my sort of 17, 16, 17 age. Uh, not in the Uniting Church, is where I was a member, but in an evangelical church out in the eastern suburbs. So surviving that, um, I wanted to distance, my, distance myself a little bit and really just work in the social justice arm of the church. Yeah. So I went on to be the CEO of um, Uniting Care. I did candidate for ministry uh, and I was accepted and that's pretty much where I came out. My coming out journey was in candidating for ministry and having to sort of come out about being, you know, being a dyke back then and that was pretty tricky. And how, how was that? Because, you know, like everyone's journey again is very different, isn't it? I look back on that and I think that was abusive, you know, what I went through to do that. And there's a, in the, in the system, there's a congregation, presbytery and a synod, it's kind of three levels. And you go through them all and it's kind of like, it's called a discerning process. So people decide, you know, they hear your story and they decide whether they're going to put you to the next process. And so I went through the the congregation that was fine because I'd been a youth worker and a volunteer and done all that sort of stuff and I went through the presbytery and they said oh yes absolutely you know send them off and to to the synod and the synod is where I came out and said right if you want to send me off to college theological college you need to know uh, I like women and uh, they said oh, okay but we'll need to tell presbytery so I remember actually as a young you know what 19 20 year old person actually standing up in front of about 120 people 
Oh. And I think about that now. I think that you wouldn't do that. Mm. You know, hopefully most you know denominations wouldn't do that. And the vote was, you know, 46, 64 or something. Oh, how lovely. Yeah, and it got over the line. So that, I was really quite, you know, it all prepares you for the postal survey later in life, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I, um, I deferred. You know, I was accepted, but the whole thing was so traumatic, you know, I deferred. I'm really glad I did because I don't think I'd still be ordained if I'd gone through that. And I certainly wouldn't be where I am. But yeah. I worked for the church for, you know, 15 years of my life, which was brilliant. And I absolutely loved it, but not in a... Not in the ordination sense. With that, with that um, you know, like vote of confidence, uh, I, I found it with uh, the marriage equality vote as well. How everyone changed so much mm. in in you know, like, Did you f feel that people looked at you differently and appreciated you more when when that vote came out? Not the marriage equality back back when you were in oh, your late teens. No, look, I think back then I was just relieved, but you did think about, you know, like you did with the postal vote, you still thought about the 46 that said no. Mm. You know, you don't really think about the 64 that said but yes. But they weren't very quiet though, didn't they? And they, they have... Well, they did, but because then, you know, you do, you know, it's the, it's, the, it's the quiet minority that they've got the, well, you know, the, on the right that, that really caused you the trouble, I think. So then I did get a bit of backlash then, and you know, that still happens. So what happened next? So moved to Shepparton. Yep. And took a role with the Uniting Church up there and right. um, set up Cutting Edge, which was a youth service, which grew, you know, broadly. I ran the first uh, same-sex attracted youth support program in rural Australia up there. That was before it was LGBTIQ, you know, back then. Yeah. Uh, that was really where I started working in my own community for us and, and thought, well, okay, if there's nothing in Shepparton, then there's probably nothing in Warrnambool and there's nothing in, you know, Mildura. So I chaired the Youth Affairs Council of Victoria and, you know, lobbied through them to government and we got a statewide network to support, you know, which is still going, has, has gone strong under, you know, both sides of government now. Mm -hmm. There's over a million dollars in the Hay Program to support rural LGBTIQ kids. Did you have a partner through this? I did. We, um, we moved to um, Shepparton together. Um, still one of my best friends. Oh, lovely. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, went to her wedding a couple of months ago, which is nice. Excellent. And um, yeah, but it's pretty tough, really tough going. You know, when people, I remember people went through our house, broke into our house and went through our stuff. And earlier on, I got, you know, lemons thrown on my roof and my car, you know, beaten up. And I was, uh, you know, roughed up as well. It was tough in those days. And, and did it make you stronger and more determined? Well, here I am, mm. you know, and I think you can go two ways, you know, as an advocate, you can go right too hard. I've had enough, which is perfectly acceptable, yep. perfectly fine if people need to do that. But for me, it just actually made me really cross. And I thought, well, how am I going to turn this into something positive? So, you know, I, I kept being an advocate. I kept learning from others and surrounded myself with, you know, I think great mentors that would help me get to where I am today. Uh, and just w kept, kept around, chipping though? away. Were they around, the mentors? Well, look, there were, there were some fabulous people. And, you know, Jamie Gardner, you know. Oh. Right? How good is he? Uh, and look, I am the first gender and sexuality commissioner, but he was the first gay human rights commissioner in Victoria. He didn't have the title, but he was, you know, he was definitely gay and out. And he came to Shepparton, you know? He came and he, and he met with the, uh, the youth group and he did some of that early work. And, you know, I watched him and I thought, yep, that's something that I'd really like to do. It's hard to be that involved and lead a normal life sometimes, isn't it? Or that did it become so much part of your life? Well, you know, people say, where are your boundaries, Commissioner? You know, I say, well, I don't know, where are they? Because it is your life. Yep. You know, you try to carve out, you know, time for your family and things, but, you know, I can't go anywhere and not be the Commissioner. You know, I, I remember when somebody that I didn't know stopped me in the street for the first time. That's weird. That is weird, you know. I remember that, I'll never forget that. Yeah, that, that would be weird. And especially in that role. Yeah. Um, well, hold on, we've jumped oh, a little bit jumped. too far. Uh, and uh, so, so let's talk about, you're, you're in regional Victoria uh, and things are moving along quite nicely for you. Yeah, they are. Uh, so basically, I think if you're not at the table, you're not at the table. So while I was in Shepparton running, you know, an agency and building an agency, I was traveling to Melbourne to sit on boards. Uh, so I sat on the Adult Community and Further Education Board, basically because I believe it's your pathway to poverty. Education's your pathway to mm. poverty. And for some people like myself that don't go through a tertiary system, we need all those kind of community colleges, local community learning centres. And uh, that got me onto the Victorian Skills Commission. 
which looks after all the TAFE uh, in Victoria and all post compulsory education. So I was up and down. And we started the first minister advisory committee on what was gay and lesbian health then. So uh, I was on the first one and then I chaired the second one. Um, I was on the third one as well. And it, it, like when we first started, it met in the basement just about of Department of Human Services and it was attached to the, you know, some sort of food and hygiene part of, you know, but we thought we were Christmas. We thought it was fantastic, <laughs> you know. And now, uh, you know, it's, it's the centre of government, you know, the task force, LGBTI task force yeah. is right in premier and cabinet. But, you know, it, it was slow and, it, and we didn't get a lot done in the first year, but we were still the first state. Uh, that had one. So yeah, a lot of uh, commuting up and down, up and down, up and down. That was, um, you know, hard. But, you know, I wanted to stay relevant and bring a rural voice, you know, to the city. You only have to be in the city for six months and you, you're you not rural anymore. So, you know. <laughs> Does it fade away that quickly? Oh, think? absolutely. Yeah. You know, if you're not in the bush, you're not, you're not from the country. Okay. Yeah. E even though a lot of your roots were, were back there and what, you know, like your involvement was. I think you, you never so lose there. the understanding of it, uh, but I don't think you can, you know, like I've still got a house in the country and. You know, I see it on television. Yeah, so yeah. That, that show is <laughs> replayed so often on I know, ABC. It's, it is. Oh, it was on the other day. Look, every time it's on, I know because someone texts me or stops me in the street and says, I saw you on back roads. Yeah. And, and what town is that? Violet Town. Yeah. Uh, and that was a beautiful story that the ABC did on the town, yeah. but they f featured heavily on you. Yeah, they did. Uh, and, you know, it was, it was terrific. I mean, it is, it's, it's a town with a story to tell around diversity, you know. And, you know, got your rednecks and stuff, but I'm certainly not the only gay in the village anymore. You moved back to, to town when? For this job, basically. Uh, you know, I thought this is going to be a great opportunity. Didn't really know what it would look like. Uh, We'd had Alex by then and she was eight, so. Right, let's just talk about that, mm. your partner. Yeah, okay. We're getting She's... married in six days. <laughs> whoa, whoa, well by the time this goes to air, we'll be married. You'll be married. Yeah. A wonderful relationship the two of you have together. It's, it's really lovely uh, seeing you out and about uh, because you're still very much your own people, but you're, you're there, aren't yeah. you? Yeah, 13 years ago we met and I said, you know, stick with me, kid, it'll be a ride. I and certainly delivered on meet? that. Well, we met, uh, we met when I was 21. Yeah. Uh, and then we saw each other every two or four years after that. And um, we eventually got together 16 years after that. So, you know, when the timing was right for her and right for me. But it was, you know, it's a love story for sure. Oh, and uh, I, never, I had a flame going for her for a long time. Yeah. Just had to, really? had to wait. Yeah. And, uh, you yeah, know, it's been a lot of waiting, really, now 13 years. We've been married a number of times. We have a photo <laughs> album of all the weddings. Uh, and, you know, Alex is growing up yeah, all yeah. the weddings. And uh, in the first one, she's wearing a meringue. This one, she's quite, you know, not wearing a dress. So it's really interesting that, you know, we have... And there have been protest weddings and they've been, you know, been serious. But, yep. you know, it, this is I think it's going to feel really different. Mm. Mm. Now, let, let's talk about Alex, you know, like being brought up by two powerhouses in, in our community. Like I, I saw her at Harry Potter yeah, the other yeah. week. She's so adjusted, isn't yeah. she? Complete bias. Complete yeah, bias. I think, I think she's had an excellent childhood, mm. really. Uh, she only listens to Joy and she gets into <laughs> anybody's car and flitches it to Joy. Oh, like. how sweet. <laughs> so, you know, and listens to everybody and loves it. Uh, you know, I think she's just been around diversity in all its forms. You know, she's been to the Aboriginal LGBTI Congress with me. She's been to multicultural LGBTI conferences. She's, she's met and knows everybody. She's not scared of a chat herself, as you know, David. And um, during the marriage equality campaign, uh, she said, you know, we thought at the beginning, we thought, oh, we'll just try and keep it from her. Crazy, you know, mm. sort of counting the number of yes posters on the way to school. But <laughs> she, one day she said, look, mum, uh, you know, can I write your speech? She knew I was getting up on a truck and I was going to do one of the speeches at the rallies. And I read it and I, of course cried. Mm -hmm. And I said, Alex, this sounds like a speech you might like to give. Anyway, it was. Yeah. So I asked the other powerhouse and she said, yeah, that's all right. So I think it was about 3,000 people. It was raining, so the numbers were down a tad. And she got up and I tell you, you could have heard a pin drop. Wow. And she said, you know, I just want to acknowledge the country that we live and dance and march on today and you know, pay my respect to traditional owners and just thank you all for helping make my family, you know, my rainbow family safer and 
whatever happens with the postal server, I know my family love me and, yeah. you know, it was just amazing, yeah. just amazing. Of course, you know, she's now in the debating team at school and she's, you know, put herself up to be, you know, school president and, you know, I think she'll be right. Yeah, it sounds so. I don't know what she'll do, but it'll be good. Well, you, you know, like, how do you know at this stage? Although some, some kids do, don't they? When she was really young, wanted to be a mermaid, then she was going to be, <laughs> you know, <laughs> grow up and be this and be that. Yeah, and, yeah, like, no, yeah. A, she'd like to just be J.K. Rowling, actually. Mm, yeah, well, she's a big Harry Potter fan. Yeah. Just going back to the marriage equality, uh, and you, you mentioned about all the, uh, the posters, the yes posters that were up everywhere. There was one thing I really noticed, and my heart was so so happy and I was so full of pride with the amount of flags in hanging from people's houses and out of apartments um, you know, on balconies and the, the yes posters everywhere. It was a really, it was a real coming out mm. for our community, wasn't it? You know, like, yeah, uh, it was. To actually, you know, like, you could have had rocks thrown at your place with um, uh, on your balcony, but it wasn't happening, was it? No, not in not in Melbourne. You know, I did a fair bit of work in rural Victoria. You didn't see the same number of flags. Oh, I'm sure. And so, yeah, we did have that bubble to live in. So you sort of expected a yes based on the number of flags on the way to school and uh, around town and everything else. And the other thing that really was an inspiration for me was with the lanyards around the CBD. Yes, and still. Still, yes. still there, you yeah. know. And, uh, Every time I saw one, it was just a big kick along, you know. People were really out to support our community because it was something that never should have happened. Mm. And I will work till the last breath in my lungs that it never happens to any other minority group. Mm. A majority should never dictate the uh, social justice and human rights of a minority group. Terrible. Let's talk about now. Here you are, Commissioner. Whoa. <laughs> um, when when did it come about? How did it happen? What was your reaction? Well, honestly, it took me, you know, two or three weeks when people said, good morning, Commissioner, not to turn around and see who they were looking at. <laughs> <laughs> so it happened, you know, it was a long time. Everything in my life has built up to, you know, I was a commissioner for the Skills Commission and this job became available and, you know, uh, I went for it and it had my, definitely had my name on it mm -hmm. and uh, having been chairs of Minister Advisory Committees and so on. But it... It was surreal. There's no question, and no, and nobody had been the commissioner before, which meant you could make it up. And uh, I do, I do that a lot, actually. <laughs> it's like, oh, you know, I think it's part of working for the church is always permission, you know, forgiveness, not permission. So, yeah. so you know, it, it came about pretty quickly, and in fact, I didn't even have a contract signed before I did the first media piece, you know, and once. Once the, the uh, minister, Martin Foley, fantastic minister and fantastic yes. boss, once he'd done the media announcement, I got 12 or 13 media calls in, in you know, two or three hours. Mm. And I was down at Neil Mitchell by you know, four o'clock that afternoon. So it, it started with a bang. Mm. Mm. What is your main objective of the role? Well, in a summary, it's to make Victoria a safer place for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, diverse, intersex and queer people. And that can take all its forms, you know, and from inside government primarily uh, to working with corporate Australia or looking at legislation change within government or sporting groups, you know. Well, that's the, the hard one in, yeah. in a way, isn't it? And our community orgs. But basically 20% of my time I try to spend within community and 80%, you know, in the mainstream. I think it's probably 50-50, to be honest. But, you know, a lot of, lot of speaking of events, trying to just change hearts and minds, really. That's pretty much what I do. And then, of course, projects around family violence, conversion yep. therapy, uh, establishing, you know, LGBTI groups for minority groups within the, within the alphabet. So there's, there's a lot to do. A lot of people have, have said, and you know, like not so much people within our community, but the broader community and a few people also in our group, is that once marriage equality got through, why do we need all of this yeah. going on? Well, that's, that's crazy talk, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and I think so many people think that's the last piece, you know, but we know that uh, the trans folk are very underemployed. Yep. Uh, we know that there's no permanent home uh, for our archives. We need to build the Pride Centre to make sure that there is a place where we can celebrate and remember our history yep. before marriage equality, you know, in the 80s when, when gay men were 
uh, being lost in their hundreds, you know, and, and many young queers don't even know the history of their own community. No. So all of that is really important, as well as legislation, uh, particularly work around the intersex community. This year we're doing a whole lot of work uh, for them as well. And, you know, there's lots to do. I'm certainly not going to be out of a job for a number, <laughs> number of years yet. And this government um, isn't going to be um, uh, yeah, like kicked out any time soon. Well, we have another four-year term, so I expect to be around for it, yeah. Yeah. Ro Allen, thank you so much. Um, it's As I said at the beginning, it's an absolute honour to interview you today. Pleasure. I'm David Hunt. We'll see you soon.